Wednesday morning. What a day at City Field, day and night for the Mets as they sweep a doubleheader against one of baseball's best teams in the San Francisco Giants coming back in the first game. Yeah. <laughs> and then Max Scherzer taking that no-hitter into the sixth inning and making everybody stay up to watch that. And then, of course, finishing the job in the second game. Yankees win, but another miserable performance by Garrett Cole, and that problem gets bigger and bigger. You got game two of Nets and Celtics tonight, and a Boomer in a great mood. He was floating in this morning after another impressive Ranger win. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? You know what? I called this a winner Wednesday. Uh, the only one that really hasn't won uh, or didn't win yesterday was Garrett Cole. Uh, and it's a and it's a major problem, as you said. And this is what happens. You know, you got a thirty six million dollar ace on the mound, and he can't use his um, you know his spider tack. And in a day like uh, like it was yesterday, whether it be at City Field or out in Detroit, I mean, they're pretty much similar days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's going to have major problems, and he's had major problems early in these games. This is three in a row stinkers for him. And um, <laughs> you, you talk about signing guys to long term contracts. And yeah, but this one was man. This wasn't the same type of trajectory. This uh, wasn't uh, like uh, a guy who you're signing him to a long term contract, and then you know in his late thirties he's a shell of himself. This is a guy who went from the most dominant pitcher in baseball to pedestrian because they took away a, a, a substance that he was using that made him dominant. All right, I, I don't want to you know get hung up on all the negative here, but I mean it is obvious that they got a they have a problem. They got a thirty-six million dollar problem, and he's got to figure it out. And he can, maybe, maybe he'll get better when it gets warmer. I don't know. They won the game. That's all that really truly matters. But you know, when you really break it down and you say, okay, what are the problems? You, you don't want to think that your ace is a problem. I mean, for the Mets, at least we had a backup ace, and his name <laughs> was uh, you know Max Scherzer, and he was dealing last night, and he and he was dealing, you know, in a situation where you know they had already used a lot of their relievers in the game before the him. That's right. As Tyler McGill tried to keep the game as close as he can, he kept it tied essentially, and didn't have his best stuff. And and uh, you know it's kind of interesting listening to Ronnie Darling and and Gary talking about you know the San Francisco Giants like are the third least team or the team that swings at the first pitch the, the least amount of time. Something something crazy like that. And okay. they were up there just hacking away because they knew. The Tower McGill likes to throw strikes on the first pitch. So why not go up there and go swinging? So they had a different approach and they got to him a little bit. But, you know, both Francisco Lindor and Max Scherzer earned their money yesterday. They earned their status. They earned their money. They lived up to the back of their baseball card. And that's why Met fans like you and me this morning are totally stoked. And on top of that, I got a Ranger shutout that's three in a row for the Rangers last night, even though I'm I'm Reticent to go all in just yet because I still think we give up way too many high scoring uh, chances, uh, great A scoring chances. And, of course, Shesterkin has been amazing this year. He's been unbelievable. And, and what makes him so good is that he has this ability to handle the puck that, you know, the previous great goaltender we had in Henrik, that wasn't his strong suit. This turns out to be like a third defenseman back there a lot of times, which takes a lot of pressure off the young defenders. But way too many high scoring chances still – so when you come out of it, you're like, all right, they won 3 nothing. But, and the reality is, is if you look deeper and you look at the nuances of the game, there there are some things that they're giving up now. There's a good chance that they can end up playing the Washington Capitals in the first round of the playoffs now because the Capitals are one point behind the Pittsburgh Penguins in the standings, and they have one game in hand. And the Capitals are playing well, and the Penguins haven't been playing well here finishing the season. So, hey, man, all I could tell you is I wake up this morning, I'm happy, man. And, and I think – for the most part, New York fans should be happy. You got well, basically four winners coming out of yesterday, even though Garrett Cole was still a blemish on the Yankees' radar. Sure. I mean, I think that that's a bigger problem. That's a uh, 30,000 feet in the air problem for the Yankees, uh, for sure. But, you know, winning that game and not losing another one and still being right there in the division and not falling behind. I mean, you know, if you look at the Mets in their division right now, I mean, everybody else is under 500. I mean, I know it's early April, but you like to see that. Just that the closest playing. team is three and a half games behind you already. Uh, and you got the best record in baseball. And what, what makes me feel good about it being sustained, and I know we could probably, you know, potentially play this back in September and laugh at how excited we were because a bunch of stuff went wrong, which could always happen in a baseball season. But the reasons why I think this is, you know, sustainable is you got real leaders I mean, real, legit, proven leaders 
on this team and Buck Walter being the manager, being the top one there, and Max Scherzer is another one. I mean, this guy, I mean, he even said it. He, he said, I had to go out there and I had to go seven regardless because of what happened, you know, with the bullpen and the doubleheader extra what happened in game one, yeah, extra innings and all that. You know, I mean, and he's, you know, he, he's 38 years old. He's making 40 something million dollars and he's out there pitching like it's game seven of the World Series. And you just love to see that. You just love it. So as down as I was the beginning of the season because of the lockout and all the nonsense, I mean, this team has all those elements that make you want to come back for more. Winning. Yeah, I mean, but in the, in the you know, you don't even feel like they're out of it. Like how many in years past, you know, 4-1 lead might as well be 40-1. to one. And a deficit, rather. Might as well be a 40-1 to one deficit, especially against a good baseball team so, like the Giants. So here we are, like 12 games into the season, you feel this way about the Mets. Imagine if you're a Ranger fan and you're, you know, 76 games into the season, 77 games into the season. And you see that they've it's a already crap shoot the Stanley Cup playoffs. I know, though, but, but, yeah, it's but, a but crap what shoot. I'm saying though is that yeah. they won 50 games, and and you know it's like all right, that that was somewhat unexpected. I think that everybody thought the team was going to be better. I don't yeah. necessarily know that they thought they were going to be this much better, but it certainly helps when your goalie is playing out of his mind, and he's probably going to win the best in the trophy uh, this year because of his performance, but. You know, I, I would just say in, in regards to your leadership thing, that is the most important aspect of all these teams, especially when you're bringing mercenaries. You know, let's face it, Francisco Lindor is not a mercenary. He's going to be here for the next 10 years. Uh, Max Scherzer is a mercenary. He's a short, short-term contract, a high-dollar contract, yep. and he's here for exactly what he did last night, and he lived up to every ounce of the billing that we have for him and what we expect from him, especially given the state of the uh, the starting pitching for the New York Mets. And then, of course, there's Francisco Lindor. You know, uh, I, I always I, I came into this year hoping that he was going to have some sort of a bounce back year and at least get off to a decent start. He's gotten off to better than a decent start. He's gotten off to a great start. And he came through yesterday in extra innings, and he came through uh, in the in the, the nightcap as well. Uh, so so now maybe he's a little bit more comfortable. And you know, the other thing too, I see the smile, I see all that kind of stuff that I saw last year. I don't just see a lot of the, the hijinks and all the nonsense that we saw last year. Yeah. You know why? Because it's an adult in the, in the dugout who I believe, you know, they're going to lose their share of games. We all know that. But he's a coach, a manager. When you show up to the ballpark, and, and you and I talked about this the other day, and, and, of course, they wrote about it and everybody was talking about it, and, and that was what he did on the appeal play and how that worked out. And then – of course, now they, the, the writers, the people that are covering the team, go to the players and they start asking the players about that play. You know, Pete Alonso says, you know, I've never seen that play, but I know that we've talked about that play, we practiced that play, and we all expected for uh, J.D. Davis to, to run on that play, to get the play active. And like it's like the team knew about it. I, if that were the team last year, would we have known about it? No, and I'll give you two more examples from yesterday. And, and both of them happened in the 10th inning of game one. You know, the first of which is it's the top half of the 10th. You got the Tyro Estrada ground ball to Francisco Lindor. Bad throw pulls Pete Alonso off the bag. I mean, when I watched that in real time, and then even when I watched the first replay, I said, he's off the bag. Yeah, I mean, we all, I think we all, saw, we all felt the same way. Right. So then when I see that it's being challenged, I go, well, this is a waste of time. Like, why even wasting our time? And, and he goes, he does a why not. They find a frame in which he is out, where, I mean, Pete is just, you know, the ball's just touching his glove. His foot is still on there. And they find that one frame where, I mean, this is this would drive you nuts if you were on the other side of it. Um, but there it is right there where the ball is in the glove for a split nanosecond, and he's out. So that's another one of those great things. And then also the, the double switch, sneaky double switch situation, getting Brandon Nimmo to be the ghost runner on second base. Those are Those are two things right there on top of the appeal play from the other night that – other managers, especially here, have not done that. I mean, you could say those those moves yesterday resulted directly in a victory for the Mets in that first game. Yeah, I, well, I think the replay was an easy one just simply because what he got to lose. Yeah. Uh, the double switch, whether he meant it to be that way or, I mean, you know, the Giants sure were going to have none of it. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But uh, this is uh, a couple of times now where we have seen where a manager's decision or a manager's uh, – preparation, if you will, uh, with his players uh, has pay, paid off. And this, you guys make fun of me 
for years and years and years and years when he was the manager of the Orioles and he'd be giving the Yankees fits. Yeah. You know, and I'd be like, you know, it's Buck Showalter. It's Buck Ball. It is what it is. The guy can read the, uh, the, the rule book inside and out. You know, he's pushing all the right buttons right now. Plus, he's getting, you know, top-level performances from the guys that they have brought here. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's the other good part of it is, you know, whether you want to credit Billy Epler or you want to credit Sandy Alderson, whoever you want to credit for what they're getting out of some guys. And remember, now, Canna is still not back yet. That's right. So he's got the COVID thing. Maybe he'll be uh, uh, released today. Who knows? Maybe he's got a few more symptoms than Brandon Nimmo had. But well, I, Buck's I, not going to be there tonight. Really? He's got the medical procedure that he says he's, they didn't say what it was. He didn't say what it was after the game. Uh, but he said he's having a medical procedure that's hopefully only going to keep him out for tonight. And then okay. he's hoping to be back Thursday. Mm. So, I don't, I mean, you don't love to hear that. No, but. I don't. I know. You know, it's like, you know, when the team is winning, you want the coach there. You want the manager there. Yeah. You know, and you want, like, as, as much as, is like, I can't believe that the Rangers have won 50 games. <clears throat> you have to say that the changing of the coach is a big part of that. Sure. Especially in the game of hockey, because they switch coaches, you know, like it's bingo. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this coach has brought the best out in this team, and the players are playing at a high level, especially the goalie. But, like, this team is playing. The Mets are playing the way they're playing, I believe, not only because they have good players, but because they have a manager that's, you know, is a baseball guy. He's a real hardcore baseball guy. And all you want is a guy that knows all the roles, knows all the nuances of the game, and then takes those nuances in preparation and uses them in order for his team to win games. I mean, the fact that he did that on the appeal play and the fact that the players then were asked the question by the, the beat writers uh, about, like, have you ever seen that before? What does that mean? And, and and every player to a man that was interviewed was talking about how, yeah, this is we've talked about it. It's all about preparation. It's all about understanding. We think sometimes we just send, send the nine guys out and let them go play. No, 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 no. See, this is what I worry about, like, with the Nets. I worry about that with the Nets because it's like, okay, you got two guys – Here's the basketball. Go make some plays, guys. If you don't have a rhyme or reason in the in the really the, the nut crunching time of the game and you're just asking two guys to go out there and do something spectacular, I think you're asking for defeat. I mean, if you have a, a set play or if you have an understanding of what's going on and where you are, do you call a timeout? Don't you call a timeout? How do you play defense? All of those things go back to the coach. And I have to say, the manager for the Mets is doing great. The head coach for the the Rangers has turned this team around, along with the the new GM and Chris Drury, and I I gotta be I gotta tell you I'm I'm happy as hell. Yeah, I, I come I mean, here this morning like I, there's nothing I can bitch about. Well, yeah, and then that's what we've been doing a lot of the mm. last couple of years because everybody's been bad. Yes, I mean everybody. I mean I mean your your team had to blow it up last year going into this year. I mean the the Islanders were really the only team. I mean, the Yankees, even though they made it to the wild card game, that was a massive underachievement for them. And the Mets had a miserable year last year. New York football is a joke. So we've been going through. The Knicks, of course, gave us a little bit of life last year, but ended up getting roasted in the playoffs by the Hawks. So, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of positivity. You know, so for those who are excited about whatever right now, uh, you know, you're allowed to be excited about it because it's it, we haven't had a lot of it. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I don't care what you say. I'm really jacked, man. And, yeah, you, I know. and you, by the way. You're wearing your green Celtic pullover again. That's right, a little quarter zip uh, Celtic pullover today. Yeah, I mean you are just. I, I saw what's his name, uh, Marash running around with a Nets jersey on. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think that was there, actually there, a Nets I, flag I, I, that I, turned into a I jersey. I have to say something. Just, I like the kid. You do. I, yeah. I do. I. You know, I like Marash. Yeah. Yeah. How I, could I you not I, like? Him? I, I yeah. think he's funny. He's a South Shore guy. He's a South Shore guy. He's one of us. He's a P PVC fence above ground pool guy. Too. Yes, exactly. He's perfect. I mean, yeah. he fits the stereotype. He's like the mascot. Like he, yeah. Yes, he's the Long Island South Shore mascot. Right. But I mean, he's wearing a Nets jersey. It 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 looks like it's like a sausage packed into a a, a tight like packaging. Yeah, sausage like, casing is what you're looking for? Yeah, I guess sausage casing would yeah. be it. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, man, this is – how old is he? Is he your age? Uh, he is a few years younger than me, I believe. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with – I'm not against, you know, guys wearing jerseys. I'm not. I'm not because I wear jerseys every now and again too. And I'm not against it. Believe me, I'm not against it. But – The basketball you, you, jersey. I mean, you got you to gotta stand in front of the, the mirror and just say, hey – do I look good today? And you have to be <laughs> honest with yourself. No, you look like a sausage casing. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. 
basketball jersey's tough on someone that's not in shape. Like, put, let's put it this way. I would never put on. Like, I, I was, because I bought some stuff, obviously, some yeah, Celtic stuff. Wasted, and I went, I went, your money. I went quarter zip is what I did. Yeah. You know, no, I didn't waste my money. I'm so proud to put this on today, man. Like, I can't <laughs> pissing off all those Nets fans. Like, right. this is the greatest thing ever. Like, I, I'd pay double for what I paid for this thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we get Marash in here a little bit later. and We could show the people who are watching on CBS Sports Network. But I, it's just, it's a little, just a little embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, just the jersey when you're an adult and you're a big guy like that, not becoming. I mean, if you had a net quarter zip like you have yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's what or, I was going to say. Like, yeah. So I, I was going to buy. Or a golf shirt or something. I was going to buy like a Tatum jersey or something, but I was like, nah, this is more of a classy look. Like, a, like a football or a hockey jersey is great. You know, yeah, hockey yeah. jerseys tend to be a little bit bigger. Sure. <clears throat> right. Everything looks good. I, I think, is he an Islander fan? No, he's a Ranger. 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 He's a Ranger. So I, I just, I'm, it's a little embarrassing that he's running around here with this. This jersey on, it looks ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know where he came up with the Nets because he's a Yankees, Giants, Rangers, Nets fan. So maybe I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was a big Julius serving guy back in the day. Yeah, I don't think so. It like was a little, little before his I don't time. I think it was alive. Uh, all right, it is Boomer and Geo on the fan end. CBS Sports and Network. 